Are you sick of being turned on by Dracula? I know I am. And you're looking for something a bit more Nosferatu, Bram Stoker style, old school appeal and look? Well, the last voyage of the Demeter hears you, it sees you, and it has delivered that version. Let's sink our teeth into it. Oh, oh, oh God. Before I really take a bite out of this one, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel as I post tons of movie content each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. Now, I mentioned Dracula's in this movie, and he very much is, don't worry. But it is called The Last Voyage of the Demeter, which is a ship. And that is the central focus, specifically the human characters on there. This is a two-hour voyage. It could have been trimmed down a bit. However, the pacing's pretty damn solid. And I'm not going to beat around the bush. I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. I didn't love it by any means, but it was very solid, very well executed flick, some very good visuals, some great practical effects, some shoddy CG from time to time, but for the most part, it's working really well. The vampire design is fantastic. I like how it kind of metamorphosizes over the course of the flick. And I really like that there's some lead protagonists here that I don't want to kill. I find myself often lately wanting to root for the villain wanting these people to die. But thankfully not in this case. There's some really good semen on this ship. Semen that I cared for. Semen that I really enjoyed. Now, not all the semen was great. There's some bad semen on the ship too. Semen that, quite frankly, put a bad taste in my mouth. That out of the way, Corey Hawkins plays Clemens. He's the main character on this, the protagonist, if you will. He boards the ship kind of last minute. He's proven himself as a doctor, as a ship hand. He's kind of a jack of all trades, really. Uh, and he's also black, which, um, yeah, that's not a positive in this film because this takes place in the late 1800s, 1897, if my memory serves me correctly. It probably doesn't, but regardless, it's, it's around that era. It's around that time period. So racism is really all the rage still. Thankfully, it doesn't rear its ugly head too often. This isn't what the middle-aged guys would call woke, I don't think but I also don't think they'll care at the same time because it's not made by Disney and it's not a popular film by any means, but it is a good film. A film that primarily takes place on this ship. 99% of the time we are on the ship. It has a very isolated feel to it, kind of an alien vibe. It's dark out a lot of the time, rain's coming down. It is formulaic, for sure. It does have your horror tropes in play. Bad guy comes out at night, scares people, feeds, goes back to bed, wakes up again. <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. What keeps it from feeling stale though, are the characters on this ship. Because as far as the audience is concerned, they're all very much disposable. Liam Cunningham's in this too. He plays Captain Elliot. The other semi-main protagonist, although I do wish he had more screen time, he felt a little bit pushed aside for Clemens' character, which is all right. Like I said, Clemens is very likable. He's a, he's a good main protagonist. He's not tripping and falling and in doing stupid things constantly. He makes logical choices. And that's another big thing here are the themes of logic versus faith versus you know evil versus science it's all very much the yin yang side of things the jack versus Locke. for those of you that remember lost back in the day this movie is thankfully rated r i think we'd be doing a disservice to vampire films and specifically dracula if it wasn't and they don't shy away they use it they use it pretty well some decent gore some violent scenes, some graphic imagery, things that we all love, things we all appreciate in horror films, it's there. I mentioned the moody atmosphere, I mentioned the transformation thing going on. It's all done very well. But again, it's also stuff we've seen before, but this time on a ship. And that's what gives it a little bit of its own flavor. I'm not going into the plot at all, not that it's deep or profound in any sense of the term. This is a bottle episode. This is, people are trapped on something, they have to try to survive, and the problem is they're going up against one of the most fearsome foes in all of cinema. Godzilla, Dracula. It's the second one. I also dug the score of this movie. It's very haunting, creepy, really goes with the vibe of the film. I don't think I have to say anything more. We'll leave it at bat. <laughs> Instead of cat, they said bat. <sighs> Subscribe. Well, those are my thoughts on the last voyage of the Demeter. Have you seen it? Are you planning on seeing it? Do you want to now? that I've given such a beautiful review, a glowing praise of the film. Like I said, 
It's a decent watch. It'll keep your interest, keeps you hooked. And I, I can't really ask for much more. But at the same time, it's not set in the world of Blaze. Very competently executed though, and I'm interested in seeing where this thing goes afterwards. Maybe we'll do more monster films in this style. Throw uh, Frankenstein's monster on a train. Throw the werewolf in a plane, you know? Just, just all sorts of crazy shenanigans could take place. Uh, the world is really at their fingertips. This universe is really up for grabs, and I can't wait to see what the writers and the actors who are currently on strike come up with next. Oh, that's right, they're on strike. Speaking of strike, go ahead and strike that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll catch you next time.